Hi, I'm Serena Guo, a PhD student from Information Science at Cornell University. Today I'll be presenting our work titled, I Normally Wouldn't Talk with Strangers, Introducing a Social Spatial Interface for Fostering Togetherness Between Strangers. Research in psychology has proved many benefits of interacting with strangers, including fulfilling people's need of affiliation, desire to belong, and relatedness, which all lead to people's long-term well-being. However, we do not often see such interactions happen in public space. The main barrier, according to a recent research, is people's fear that others are not interested in them, and the fear of themselves not being a good conversationalist. So in our work, we introduce a social spatial interface modality that mediates interpersonal communication between strangers. We also contribute a design exemplar called Social Stools that provides innovative, collaborative, playful, and immersive experience to cultivate a connection between strangers. Lastly, we contribute insights about which social behaviors indicate togetherness and how strangers experience them. We also offer our design applications towards designing for newly met groups. There have been different efforts in HCI in this realm. For example, these devices to encourage interpersonal touch, interventions to suggest conversational topics, displays that show people's shared interests, or designs that encourage serendipitous encounters. Our work explored the ludic design space that leveraged the human propensity for embodied interaction to allow for varieties of these interactions to happen. There has been increased interest in HCA on designing for people's embodied interaction, especially with the help of the interactive public displays on our surrounding environments. However, this modality was still less explored and most of them focused on large groups of strangers. Our work explored strangers' interaction in small groups and designing for people's proxemics behaviors in public space. Now we want to introduce our design of social stools. Social Stools is an installation of three responsive stools on caster wheels that generate sound and imagery in a near environment as three strangers sit, move, and rotate on the stools. The three affordances are the position, distance, and orientation. In the following, I'm going to introduce the three interactions of social stools. In the first interaction, as a metaphor for interpersonal zones, we design a projected ripple that envelops people to symbolize the proxemics during strangers' interaction. The physical distance between people suggests psychological distance. In the second interaction, we explore the possibility of combining proxemics interaction with the auditory senses. People's body orientation suggests attention or a start of a conversation. Social stools registers these nuanced social behaviors by projecting interactive imageries on the floors when users rotate themselves to orient towards or away from each other. Our system is comprised of three stools, a webcam hand above and a projector. To get the location and orientation of the stools, we put markers on them and utilize open source computer vision framework to track the markers. The research question we were interested in is, in which ways can a social spatial interface foster togetherness among strangers? In order to answer that, we conducted qualitative lab studies and we report our findings in the two categories. The behavior patterns that we analyze from the video recording and participants' experience that we analyze from the interviews. We conducted the study with 36 participants for 12 study sessions, each with three participants. We asked them to imagine themselves in a transitional space like an airport terminal, and they could freely explore the stools and talk with each other. The experiment itself is 20 minutes and the researchers gave no instructions to them. After the study, we conducted semi-structured focus group interview and individual interview to understand the thoughts behind their behaviors. The three interaction sessions were randomized across the groups. We look at three different kinds of behaviors, verbal, nonverbal, and synchronized movements. Verbal behaviors were grouped into three categories. The first is talking directly about the design. One example was 
A participant said, when you move, the visual looks like water. The second category is talking indirectly about the design. One example was a participant said, I have to take a swim test today after seeing the ripples on the floor. The third category is casual talk unrelated to the design. One example was a participant asked, which year are you in? And another, another participant replied, junior. We mapped these verbal topics with different color blocks on the timeline. This is one group of verbal behaviors with a mixing of three kinds of talks during a study. We also look at these nonverbal behaviors. Behaviors of people looking down occurred when people were exploring the design and looking up when they tried to understand how the system works. Touch was least observed, only occurring in three groups. This is an example of one participant touch another one to help her to rotate. This is an example of the participants squeezed in the center to explore how the visuals could change with their movements. They used their legs to touch each other. Laughter occurred in most of the groups with 59 times at the most in one group. Eye contact also occurred in most groups with 81 times the most in one group. This image shows one group's nonverbal behaviors. People in this group have many eye contacts and two of the participants laughed very often. When overlaying with verbal analysis, we found that people have more eye contacts when they have casual talks, but less eye contact when they talk directly about the design. This is one group's example showing that. Synchronized movements occurred commonly across all the groups. For example, this is one movement pattern that people synchronously rotate in a circle around each other. Please refer to our paper to see other examples. We also found that participants had longer, slower synchronized movements when they talked unrelated to the design compared with shorter, quicker synchronized movements when they talked directly about the design. During the interview, we found insights on how participants experience togetherness in different ways. We list here a few examples, like collaborating with each other to solve the rules and seeing the visual images as psychological hint of bounding, having shared memories, and even not talking, moving together in silence with physical cues could connect people. Additionally, the design intention of the social stool was that the interface could attract people's attention at the beginning of the experience, serving as a focal point of interaction. And then three participants would shift their attention to the, each other as, group, as a group when the interface fades into the periphery. So you can see the diagram like this. This diagram shows one group's dynamic that we have intended for with the shifting of focus. In the interview, participants did report that visual and audio feedbacks gave them some cues to start topics, and they could expand on them to talk about other lives later. Interestingly, we observed patterns of group behaviors that diverted from our design intention. It shows that there isn't one way of building a sense of togetherness between strangers. The dynamic environment allows for people to focus on the design, but could also fade away when people want to focus on each other, depends on different group intention. One participant mentioned when he didn't want to talk, the environment offered an unawkward, uncomfortable, and safe space to stay silent. Lastly, we want to mention one of our design applications. During the experiment, we observed that some participants used the tip of the projected arrow in front of them to touch another person's projected arrow. Our guess was that since there's social norms for physical touch among strangers, people implicitly consider this digital cues as prosthetics to extend their body to touch each other. This gave us insights that designers could consider digital cues to design for strangers' interaction as an extension of physical body. Please refer to our paper for more design implications. In conclusion, we contribute to design research an exemplar of novel spatial, social spatial interface that provides a collaborative, playful, and immersive experience, cultivating connection between experience between strangers. We contribute insights about which social behaviors indicate togetherness, how strangers could experience them, and on designing for the shifting focus of attention considering different group dynamics. 
We offer design applications for other design researchers designing for interpersonal communication between strangers. We want to thank all the people here for their insights and support. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>